Okay, let's talk section four, eight point four. Let's talk section eight point four. Trigonometric identities. Identity. Identity normally involves two functions. So, first, let's see two functions. F and G are said to be identical, identically equal if f x is g of x for every value of x for which both function are defined. Okay, so it's not just a, a solve for the equation. This is not the equation. You just give a, a reasonable x, this is equal. You give another reasonable x, this is also uh, e e equation. Uh, sorry, e equal. This is also equal. So such, it's not the equation. It's not a regular, it's not a general equation. It's a special. Such equation is called an identity. So you don't bother to solve the equation uh, for the identity. Identity just means this equation, uh, the solution set is, uh, is a whole domain. The solution set is a whole domain. For whatever uh, x in the domain, this left side is equal to the right side. Okay, and an equation that is not an identity the equation that is not an identity is called a conditional equation a conditional equation so sometimes you you satisfy the equation sometimes you don't satisfy the equation so for example, the algebraic formula x plus 1 squared, by the computation, we know it is x squared plus 2x plus 1. You see here, this is left side. It is x plus 1 quantity squared. It's fx. This is the right side. This is a, a g of x. For whatever input x from the domain, the domain of both sides are uh, a negative infinity to positive infinity, the set of all real numbers. So for whatever x, the left side is always equal to the right side. This is a, an identity. It's an algebraic identity. And another example, we have sine x squared plus cosine x squared is equal to 1. So left hand side is the sum of squares of two trigonometric functions. The right hand side is a 1. It's always correct because of a Pythagorean theorem. So this is an identity. So for whatever x, you always have such thing. You don't bother to solve the equation. No, so, no solve the equation. It's always correct. Or you can see the cosecant, cosecant of x is 1 over sine. It is from the definition, right? So remember that the sine is Sine x is always y over r, b over r. Cosine, uh, cosecant of x is r over b. So from this definition, you know that cosecant of x is one over sine, the reciprocal of, of sine. Reciprocal of sine. Okay, so this is angle. x. Okay, so this is identity.
and of course their equation. Regularly we know that 2x plus 5 equal to 0. It's not always correct. It's only correct. It's true only if x is uh, negative 5 over 2. With the condition, it's correct. So this is uh, an equation, a conditional equation. Unconditional equation. So in my uh, idea, we don't consider identity as an equation. Identity is just identity. Equation means it's sometimes true, sometimes not true. Okay, so that's different, totally different. Uh, okay. Now let's uh, uh, let's get the or collect the trigonometric identity. The first, we have the quotient identity. The, uh, this is on the page 633. The quotient identity, tangent of x is sine x over cosine x. This is always correct. And the cotangent of x is cosine of x over sine of x. It's called the quotient identity. And the, the second is called the reciprocal identity. It's a, a cosecant of x is 1 over sine of x. And secant of x is 1 over cosine of x. Cotangent of x is 1 over tangent of x. OK, reciprocal. Reciprocal identity. And then we have the Pythagorean, Pythagorean uh, identity. Let's, uh, let's write this word. This word is so long. Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity means those identities are from the Pythagorean theorem. So First one, sine x squared plus cosine x squared is equal to 1. If you divide by cosine, you get tangent of x squared plus 1 is, cose, uh, is secant of x squared. Sorry. And you, you start from the, this equation, you, uh, you divide by, co, uh, by sine, you get a 1 plus cotangent x squared is equal to cosecant x squared. So these three identities are equivalent to the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so it's a, that's why it's called the Pythagorean identities. Okay, so the first, second, third, and fourth is the even odd identity. Even odd identity just collect the even odd properties. We know that the sine is an odd function. Cosecant other function uh, tangent other function cotangent other function. Now let's see the other two are even. So cosine even function secant. even function, okay? So for six trigonometric functions, four odd, two even. Four odd, two even. Only cosine and secant are even. The other four are odd, okay? So they are the, the basic identities you must keep in mind. You must keep in mind. And from this identity, you see here, especially for the Pythagorean identity, we, we know that sine squared uh, sin square plus cosine squared is equal to 1. But usually, we, we may use this. So sine x squared is 1 minus cosine of x squared. You just move one term to the other side. Or cosine x squared is 1 minus sine x squared. So 
these two formulas are equivalent to the Pythagorean identity, but sometimes you can just directly use it. You don't have to always start from the Pythagorean identity and get them. So this is also a variation of a Pythagorean identities. Okay? And similar thing happened for the tangent, the second, the cotangent, cosecant. Okay. So the rest of this section is about the uh, application of all the uh, properties here we have. Okay. Let's see the example. We'll start from the, uh, the simple one, simplify. Simplify cotangent of theta over cosecant of theta. Simplify. Uh, cotangent over cosecant. Cotangent, by definition, or by the quotient rule, is a cosine of x over sine of x. Cosecant is, by the reciprocal, is a 1 over sine of x. One expression over the second expression means cosine x over sine x. This is numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of the denominator is exactly sine. So you over sine times sine is cancel. They are cancelled. So you have cosine x. So we say after simplification, the original expression is equal to cosine of x. Uh, sometimes we want to make this more clear, the problem clear. Simplify this in terms of sine x and the cosine x. Yeah, we have to know what is your uh, your, your, your rule. Well, finally, what, what do you want to write? So in terms of sine and cosine. We normally want to write the algebraic, uh, the trigonometric function in terms of sine and cosine and, and see that uh, formula, okay? Next, B. Show that cosine of x over 1 plus sine of x is equal to 1 minus sine of x over cosine of x by multiplying the numerate and the denominator by 1 minus sine x. OK, so this is our second example. So we provide the hint, usually the question does not contain by multiplying, does not contain this sentence by multiplying the numerator and denominator by this. So here we have the hint, we will directly show it. Uh, we, will, we will follow the hint and do the computation. But for one thing, whenever you see show some identity, show some identity, you never copy it. If you are asked to show it, you never copy it because before you show it, you don't know if it's right or wrong. What you can do is always a following. You start from the left hand side. Don't copy the identity. You just copy one side. You start from one side. You follow its suggestion. Multiply top and bottom by one minus sign. Okay, so we multiply top by one minus sign and the bottom by one minus sign. Okay, so that's a step. Start from left side. 
you cannot say left is equal to right and go th go to the next step. No, never. If you see if you write that, you will lose all points in the final exam. Okay, start from left side. You multiply top and bottom by one minus sign. The numerator, let's keep it. Denominator, one plus sign, one minus sign. Remember, one plus uh, a plus b, a minus b. This product is a square minus b square. So, numerate, let's still copy. Denominant becomes one square minus sine theta square. Okay, a square minus b square, a square minus b square. So, one minus sine theta square. And then, let's check here. One minus sine x square is cosine. So, it's a cosine of x. So denominator becomes cosine of a theta square. Cosine of theta square. Right? So we apply this uh, property. And now you see here cosine theta, cosine theta, you cancel. Here, denominator has two copies. You cancel one copy. Numerator cancel one copy. So you numerator only has one minus sine theta. Denominator, after you copy one, uh, after you cancel one copy of cosine, you still have one copy of cosine. So you get one minus sine over cosine. That's exactly the right side. So you start from left side. After the manipulation, you get a right side. This is the proof show this finish. So we are done. It's done. It's done. Don't, don't ever start from the, the expression. Provide. Okay. Next, simplify. One plus sine u over sine u plus cotangent of u minus cosine, cosine of u over cosine of u. Simplify by rewriting, rewriting the expression over a common denominator. Okay, so we always, we, we also have this uh, uh, hint, rewriting the expression over a common denominator. Okay, so simplify, simplify, let's copy. Okay, so the common denominator, here you have Denominator sign here is denominator cosine. So the common denominator will be uh, sine times cosine. So first term, you're going to multiply it by cosine of u. And second term, you're going to multiply it by sine of u. So that's how we rewrite the expression over a common denominator, right? And now let's continue the simplification. Okay, let's multiply the numerator. So it's one times cosine of u. Sine u uh, times cosine of u. Now the, these two fractions has a uh, has to the same denominator, so we are going to write in over one denominator. Now you have a cotangent of u times sine of u minus cosine of u times sine of u. So it's a long numerator and over the denominator. Sine u times cosine u. Right? Just multiply the first and the second 
and here we see here sine u cosine u here plus so cosine u sine u then minus they cancelled and the cotangent of u times sine u cotangent is cosine of u over sine of u times sine of u right so cotangent is cosine over sine so sine over sine times sine they cancel you have cosine of u cosine of u plus cosine of u is 2 cosine of u cosine okay and then you see here we can cancel cosine u from top and bottom so we get 2 over sine u 2 over sine of u is 2 times 1 over sine u 1 over sine is cosecant of u so the simple form is 2 times cosecant of u 2 times cosecant of u Next, we simplify this expression by factor, factoring, fac, fa, uh, factoring, by factoring. What, do, what, what does it mean by factoring? The numerator, check here, a squared minus b squared. One is one squared. a squared minus b squared is a minus b, a plus b a squared minus b squared is always a minus b times a plus b. This is factoring. So so here we follow this uh, we follow this uh, algebraic formula. We get a sine v minus 1 sine v plus 1 and denominator, they have the common factor tangent v. So factor out the tangent of v, we get a sine v minus one. Right. And then you can cancel sine v minus one, sine v minus one. You get sine v plus one over tangent of v tangent of v over tangent of v means times cotangent of v because a reciprocal uh, identity over tangent is uh, is equivalent to times uh, cotangent cotangent again cotangent is cosine of v over sine of v so let's do the product. So the sine v times the cosine of v over sine of v. One times it, one times it, let's still use cotangent of v. So in this part, because it's one times it, uh, there's nothing to simplify. So this cotangent. Sine, sine there cancel. The first term becomes cosine. So it's cosine v plus cotangent of v. It's already very, very, very simple. So. Okay. Okay, so those are the first four examples. And after that, we are going to see a sequence of uh, uh, establishing problems. Establish the identity 
establish the identity cosecant theta times tangent of theta is equal to secant of theta. Okay, so here we want to clear establish. Okay, establish. Prove. Show. So these words mean the same thing. Whenever you see show the identity, prove the identity, or establish the identity, you can never first copy this identity because you don't know if it's true or not true at the beginning. So what you can do is the uh, is the following. Usually, you always start from left side. Usually. Or usually, you start from the complex side. So uh, here, the problem, the left side is a product. Right side is just a single function. So the left side is more complex than the right side. So we start from the left side. You start from the complex side. You try to simplify it until you see the right side. Okay, so left side is equal to this, and the cosecant theta is 1 over sine of theta. Tangent theta is sine over cosine. So when you try to establish trigonometric identities, and if you have no idea, you write them as sine and cosine. Okay, so you see here, Sine, sine, one is in the numerator, one is in the denominator. They cancel, so you get 1 over cosine of theta. 1 over cosine is secant of theta. It's equal to the right side, so it's done. Okay, it's done. Don't, never, never copy the identity at the beginning. You always copy one side, either left or right. It depends on which side is more complex. The problem can be established. The problem can be proved the identity, show the identity. Establish the identity sine negative theta squared plus cosine negative theta squared is equal to 1. Okay? So the left side. Left side sine negative theta squared plus cosine negative theta squared. First, we apply the even odd identity. Sine negative theta is negative sine theta. Square means you square this internal stuff. So whenever you see sine theta squared, this expression, if when you see the uh, square on the shield of sine, it means when you up, after you apply sine, you square it. So here, it means first, first by the definition, you get a sine negative theta, and then you square it. And second, you apply this uh, other property. You get a negative sine theta square. So that's why you have here. And the cosine is the same thing. You, ha you compute the cosine negative theta first, and then square second. And the cosine is an even function. Cosine negative theta is cosine theta. Negative sine theta square, this negative sign will be cancelled by this square. So you get a sine theta square, cosine theta square. And we know that this is a Pythagorean identity. Sine square plus cosine square is equal to 1. 1 is the right side. So it's done.
So let's see another example. same question establish the identity okay so sign negative theta square minus cosine negative theta square over sine negative theta minus cosine negative theta is equal to cosine theta minus sine theta. Left side is more complex. The same thing, you see here, sine negative theta square, like what we discussed, sine negative theta square is uh, negative sine theta square, cosine negative theta square cosine theta square. In the denominator part, sine negative theta is negative sine theta, the other identity. Cosine negative theta is cosine theta, even identity. Okay, so we take the shortcut because we already did the sine negative theta square and the cosine negative theta square. And the same way, the negative signs canceled by the sign, so we get sine theta square minus cosine theta square. Very important. This is minus, not plus. Plus, you will get uh, you will get one. Minus, it's not one. And in the denominator, you have a negative negative. You factor out the negative sign. It becomes sine theta plus cosine theta. Okay. So you factor out the negative sign from the denominator. Uh, the same thing, you see here we, re here we repeatedly use a squared minus b squared is a minus b, a plus b. This is a, an extremely, extremely useful formula. So you have sine squared minus cosine squared. So it's a sine theta minus cosine theta, sine theta plus cosine theta. See, after factorization, you see here sine theta plus cosine theta, sine theta plus cosine theta. This is a common factor. We cancel them. Cancel them, the denominator has just negative sign. The numerator is sine theta minus cosine theta. There's a parenthesis, negative. And you move this negative sign into the parenthesis. Negative sine, negative, negative, it's a positive cosine. That's exactly the right hand side. So it's done. So it's done. Right? It's a uh, trig identity. Another example. Establish the identity one plus tangent u over one plus cotangent u is equal to tangent of u. So first of all, we we'll start from left hand side. Uh, there is no suggestion or recommended uh, step. If there's no something like that, you just write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So 1 plus sine u over cosine u over 1 plus cotangent is cosine u over sine u. Okay, still. You have a complex numerator, complex denominator. Let's simplify numerator and denominator separately. So numerator is a cosine u plus sine u 
over u. You write one as cosine u over cosine u, so it's a cosine u plus sine u over u. And denominate is a sine u plus cosine u over sine u. Right? Just simplify, simplify the numerator and denominate separately. So one expression over the second expression, it is equal to numerate times the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so I just switch, uh, flip the denominator. When I flip the denominator, see here, sine u plus cosine u, sine u plus cosine u. They're from top and bottom, they're canceled. So you have sine over cosine. Sine over cosine is tangent. It's exactly the right hand side. So it's done. So when you have no idea or no suggestion, no hint, no obvious property, here is obvious property, you have the uh, even odd property. It's very obvious. So you, you, you you follow that obvious uh, property. If there's no obvious property, you write everything in terms of sine and cosine, see if it can uh, help you. Okay. Establish the identity. Establish this identity. So uh, same thing, we start from left hand side because it's more complex. Uh, it's already in sine and cosine, but it's uh, the sum of two, two rational expressions. Uh, the na naive idea is to add them. To add them, you have to write them over the common denominator, right? Write the expression over the common denominator. So you're going to multiply the first expression top and bottom by sine and you multiply the second expression top and bottom by 1 plus cosine because co 1 plus cosine times sine is a common denominator you multiply multiply it by itself it's a squared okay so so here, this is sine theta squared. This one, let's just write this. One plus cosine theta squared. Okay. Uh, then we expand it. We expand one plus cosine theta squared. It is one plus two cosine theta plus cosine theta squared. So here we use that uh, 1 plus a squared is 1 plus 2a plus a squared. 1 plus a squared is 1 plus 2a plus a squared. Okay? Now what's next? You see here there's uh, an obvious identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So this sum is a 1. This one plus this one is two. Okay, so whenever you see the obvious identity, you will apply it because except that you don't you don't know what's next step. If you 
if you are confident, you know the next step. Of course, you will go, you will do that. Go to do that. If you have no idea, you just apply the obvious identity. Okay. Then for the numerator, you have two two. You factor out the numerator. You factor out factor two. You get a two times one plus cosine theta over one plus cosine theta times sine theta. Now you see here you have a common factor, 1 plus cosine theta. So cancel them. You have 2 over sine theta. 2 over sine theta is 2 times cosecant theta. Over sine means times cosecant. And this is exactly the right-hand side. So it's done. Next example. Establish the identity. Tangent plus cotangent over second times cosecant is equal to one. Establish this identity. How? How to prove it? Well, we start from left hand side. We have no idea what this is. How do we? What is a starting point? If you have no idea, you write everything in terms of sine and the cosine. So tangent sine v over cosine v, cotangent cosine v over sine v, over second one over cosine v. Cosecant one over sine v. Right? So once you have no idea, write tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant in terms of sine, cosine. Okay, now let's simplify the numerator. Cosine, sine. You add them, you're going to write everything over the uh, each of the term over the common denominator. So you multiply the first term by sine. You multiply the second term by cosine, top and bottom. And denominate is a 1 over cosine u sine u. Uh, v, v. 1 over cosine v sine v. Okay? And then the numerator can be written as a sine v square plus cosine v square. over co cosine v sine v. This is a numerator. You keep the deno common denominator added to numerator. And denominator is 1 over cosine v sine v. And now you see that this is obvious identity. Sine v squared plus cosine v squared is a 1. So it's a 1 over cosine v sine v over 1 over cosine v sine v. Clearly, this ratio is 1. It's like a, a number over itself. That's done. Right? Okay. So this is uh, the identity, uh, the, the, the trig identity. The, let's see the next one. Establish the identity. One minus sine over cosine is equal to cosine 1 plus sine. Okay. Uh, this problem, we also, the, it doesn't matter which side you, you, you start from. You can start from left side or you can start from right, right hand side. It's the same thing because they are symmetric, more or less. So 
this problem contains a common trick. We have sine and the cosine. They are more or less symmetric. Sine and the cosine has the identity sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Or remember that in the Pyth Pythagorean identity, you can also write cosine theta squared as a 1 minus sine theta squared. So here we have 1 minus sine theta without a square. How do we get square? You see, 1 minus sine theta square is it is 1 minus sine theta and 1 plus sine theta. You can factor 1 minus sine theta square as 1 minus sine theta times 1 plus sine theta. In order to apply this Pythagorean identity, we already have 1 minus sine theta. So we need 1 plus sine theta. So we multiply top and bottom by 1 plus sine theta. That is a, like the, the, the rhythm behind this multiplication. Otherwise, it's very surprising uh, for this multiplication. Why do we think about it? Because of this identity and the factorization. OK? OK, so after you multiply top and bottom by 1 plus sine theta, the numerator, the numerator is 1 minus sine theta squared. The denominator, you just copy it. 1 minus sine theta squared is cosine theta squared. And the cosine theta squared is cosine theta times cosine theta. Here you have a cosine theta. You cancel one fact. And this is on the right hand side. And it's done. Okay, so this is on uh, the proof. You start from left hand side. If you start from right hand side, you have a similar strategy. From the right hand side, assume we, we establish this identity from right hand side. If you start from right hand side, you see here you already have one plus sine theta. So you need one minus sine theta. So you multiply top and bottom by one minus sine theta. So from different side, you may multiply uh, the, the rational expression by a different expression. It totally depends on what you miss and what you need. Okay? And then, the similar computation up here. So it's a 1 minus sine theta square. 1 minus sine theta square is a cosine theta square. Here. And then you cancel cosine theta from top and bottom. Just one copy. So you have it. This is left hand side. The same thing is done. So what is the factor do you need for the multiplication? Uh, what is the factor you need in the multiplication? You have to check the formula have to check the formula. Okay, so for different formula or for different uh, property, you need the different uh, factor. So this is a section 8.4, trigonometric identities. So for the trigonometric identities, there are many computations. Try to uh, do the exercise, make sure you understand the, uh, the process. Okay. Uh, now we still have 10 minutes. Let's start the new section 8.5. So we only discussed 10, point, 10 minutes. 8.5 is a sum and difference formula.
What is the sum of difference formula? The sum of difference formula is the following theorem. We know that if, if we have two angles, alpha, beta are two angles, we want to compute cosine of alpha plus beta. So alpha plus beta is also an angle. We want to compute cosine of alpha plus beta in terms of uh, alpha and the beta. The formula is, is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Okay, so the proof depends on the clear computation of the distances and the stuffs. So it's a, a pretty complex. So we will skip the proof. And you have the sum, you also have the difference, that's why we call sum and difference formula. So the difference, here's sum, here's a, dif uh, it's a subtraction, here's a difference, here's the addition. Okay, so for the cosine, we have sum and the difference formulas like this. Again, we don't require the, uh, the proof. Uh, how do we apply this formula. For example, in our in our uh, table of uh, e evaluations, we only know zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, and two pi over three, uh, three pi over four, five pi over six, and the pi. So that's all the f uh, formulas, all the angles we can evaluate and find the exact value. And now let's see what happens if we have pi over what? Pi over 12. Pi over 12 is not in the table. Pi over 12 is not in the table. But pi over 12 is pi over what? Pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Why? So let's, let's check. Pi over 4 is the 3 pi over 12. Pi over 6 is 2 pi over 12. So the difference is a pi over 12, okay? So with this difference, pi over 12, let's compute cosine pi over 12. Cosine pi over 12 is written as a cosine pi over 4 minus pi over 6, right? Then what is a, the difference formula? Difference formula, cosine pi over 4, cosine pi over 6 plus sine pi over 4 sine pi over 6. So we are able to compute some exact value for other angles, not just those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One, not just those 9 values, 9, nine angles. Okay. Cosine pi over 4, root 2 over 2. Cosine pi over 6, root 3 over 2. Sine pi over 4, root 2 over 2. Sine pi over 6, 1 over 2. Sine pi over 6, 1 over 2. So root 2 times root 3 is root 2 times 3 is root 6. So it's root 6 over 2 times 2, 4. Root 2 times 1 is root 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so it's a 1 over 4, root 6 plus root 2. So this is a cosine pi over 12. So we, we, we write pi over 12 as a difference, we get this. Of course, here we use difference. What happens if we use a sum? We use a sum. This is a 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12, we will get 5 pi over 12. So we can also compute cosine 5 pi over 12 based on the sum rule. So cosine pi over 4, cosine pi over 6. Sum rule, here is a difference. Minus sine pi over 4, sine pi over 6.
right? So here we have the difference. Example here we have a sun example. And same thing. You, you, you see here, you, the, all the evaluation is the same except you change the sum to the difference. So it's a root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, minus root 2 over 2, 1 half. So it's a root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. It's a 1 over 4, root 6 minus root 2. So this is a, uh, the sum and difference for the cosine and two examples. And two examples. Uh, by the way, pi over 12 is 15 degrees. Pi over a uh, five pi over twelve is seventy five degree. So this is forty five. This is a thirty. So of course the difference is a uh, uh, fifteen. Here is a forty five. Here thirty. So the sum is going to be seventy five for sure. Right. This place you can use, you see, you can use as 45 minus 30. You can also use 60 minus 45. You try the computation, you get the same thing. So here, it's also equal to pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Pi over 3 minus pi over 4. You try this. You go through the stuff, you will get the exact the same 1 over 4 times root 6 plus root 12. No surprise. Okay. Right? And also you can do other computation. For example, if you, you put 45 here, 60 here, you can compute uh, the cosine for the 108, uh, 105 degrees. Okay, try this also. Okay, so that's a, a, a quick discussion about the next section, section 8.1.